Please join me in praying the St. Gertrude prayer for the holy souls in purgatory and the coronavirus prayer. The prayers are located in the back of the world. First, the St. Gertrude prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, eternal Father. All of the heathen the most precious son of the divine son of Jesus, in whom you have asked the sin of God the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those of my own home, and within my family, and yet, now that the coronavirus prayed, merciful God, hear our honor and prayer, all of us who the coronavirus, and may those who are infected receive the proper treatment and the comfort of your healing presence. May their caregivers, families, and neighbors be shielded from the onslaught of the virus. Give solace to those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Protect the dying of those who strive to find a cure, that their work may conquer the diseases and restore the communities to wholeness and health. Help us rise above the fear. We ask all this through the intercession of our lady lords, St. Michael, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Heart create for me. 
hymns with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became a source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Martin Luther King once wrote 
about a time when he knelt down in prayer at the kitchen table of his home in Alabama. A hail of stones had just come through the window because of his advocacy of civil rights for all. His wife and children were in danger. And he had already become a highly qualified academic by this time. And a promising career lay ahead. But in print, he found himself asking, do I really need this additional worry and danger? It was in that prayerful moment he decided to put what he believed to be the will of God, which was the welfare of the most vulnerable, before his own security and that of his family. He would suffer a great loss for the sake of others. In a sense, he chose to risk death so that others might have life. His life is a striking example of the image that Jesus uses in the gospel reading. The grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies and in dying yields a great harvest. Jesus himself was the supreme expression of that image. He, more than anyone, is the grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. And in dying, yields a rich harvest. He refers to that harvest, which springs from his dying towards the end of today's gospel reading. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Jesus is declaring that God, who worked powerfully through his life, would work even more powerfully through his death. His death would mean the power of God's love for us in an even fuller way than his life here on earth had done. God's love revealed in Jesus' death would draw people to Jesus. Many people over the centuries looking at the crucifix have experienced the strength of God's love for them and have found themselves drawn to Jesus and through him to God. Roman crucifixion was the most degrading form of execution. And yet, the first believers in the light of the resurrection came to recognize Christ crucified as the fullest human expression of God's love for humanity. In the words of Paul's letter to the Romans, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This explosion of God's love on Calvary was the rich harvest that came from the death of Jesus. And yet the Gospels suggest that becoming the grain of wheat that dies so that others might be touched by God's life-giving love, that did not come easily to Jesus. It was a struggle to accept the loss of so much that was dear to him, in particular, 
His vibrant life. Something of Jesus' struggle comes through in today's gospel reading. He is tempted to pray to God. What shall I say? Save me from this hour? In the other gospel, Jesus prays in the garden of Gethsemane. Take this cup from me. And yet he went on to choose this great loss out of love for all of us. In the words of Jesus' prayer in today's gospel, it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Now in these spring days, now that we have the sunshine and the extra hour of daylight, we may find ourselves sowing some seeds in the garden. The seed that dies in order to yield a new form of life is as familiar to us today as it was in the time of Jesus. The seed has to shed its husk so that the potential for new life it carries within itself can be realized. The loss of the husk is necessary if the seed is to realize its potential. Now this phenomenon of nature can speak to our own experience as much as it did to the experience of Jesus. Jesus recognized that the loss of his life was a necessary loss. But he was to remain faithful to his mission of revealing God's love to a broken world. Each of us, every one of us, you and I, can be called upon to choose some significant loss so as to remain true to what God is asking of us. We can call upon us to have people dislike us and even hate us and persecute us for the stands that we have to take for the convictions of our faith. Jesus never played his hand. We priests should not play safe. All of us should never play safe just to do what is politically correct. In doing so, in standing against the grain and standing up for our convictions, we can find ourselves at a crossroads as Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. As Martin Luther King did in the kitchen of his own home. And these are times when we sense a call to risk danger for us, some significant loss because we want to save souls and we want to speak the truth so that others, especially the most vulnerable, those little babies who have no voice, when life is the most important, expansive thing that we have, because what is the opposite of life? It's death. So that they and when we sense such a calling, we can be tempted to play it, to not rock the boat, because we don't want people to dislike us. 
or worse. We can be tempted, as Jesus wants, to pray. Save me from this hour. However, whenever we choose some loss for ourselves, out of loss for others, we are sowing the seeds of a rich harvest. In the words of the gospel reading, we will be serving the Lord Sharing in his loving and life-giving mission. Life-giving. The Lord does not ask us to take this more difficult path, relying only on our own resources. He gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to be mean to the lack of more to keep drawing to himself so that we can draw strength and courage from him. And it is the strength that we get from the Lord that allows us to keep taking that path of self-emptying love no matter what it costs us. In the words of Saint Paul, one of my favorite scriptural quotes, Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. God bless you. Stand. We will profess our I believe in one God, our Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I will believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God for God, life for life, true God from true God. Be God of the not made, not substantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. And for our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father to the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken from the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the grace and mercy of God's love and his self emptying of his love for us. Let us now offer our prayers before you. That all members of the church may profit richly from the graces that God offers them in their Lenten duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear my prayer. That the faithful obedience of believers in all nations they attract non-believers to Christ, the source of eternal, eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may practice compassion to those in need by giving from our resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that this community may shine out as a sign of Christ, lifted up from the earth, drawing all to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick and bereaved, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the prayers of the apostles Philip and Andrew, the departed may indeed see Jesus face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and sanctity of human life, from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As always now, bow your heads to take a moment to offer your own prayers in silence. With these and all of the intentions of our Blessed Mother, of St. Joseph, St. Michael, and the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, who poured out his life for us, and by the strength of the Holy Spirit, we ask you to hear our prayers and fill us with the strength to accept your holy will in all things. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disorder affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
meant to make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your name, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this saint, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Him with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, conform by His divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace and give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Blessed are those called to the supper of 
whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Everyone is invited to attend. It's a family uh, 
It's a family friendly movie. I have not heard of it, and I can't remember what the name of it was, but trust me, you know, that it will be uh, something that you can take the whole family to. Okay? Remember, a church directory is coming up, uh, photo sessions. Just look at that uh, square, that dark green square on the second page, so that you can sign up for a date to have your picture taken for our new church directory, okay? Uh, is there anything else that I need to be reminded of? Anything else? Thank you all for being here this morning. Enjoy the beautiful day. God has given it's warmed up. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass Amen. is ended. Let us now go in peace Amen. to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Have a blessed day.